Former First Lady Laura Bush is out with an op-ed in the Washington Post, writing in part, quote, I live in a border state. I appreciate the need to enforce and protect our international boundaries, but this zero-tolerance policy is cruel. It is immoral, and it breaks my heart. Our government should not be in the business of warehousing children in converted box stores or making plans to place them in tent cities in the desert outside of El Paso. These images are eerily reminiscent of the Japanese-American internment camps of World War II. Americans pride ourselves on being a moral nation. If we are truly that country, then it is our obligation to reunite these detained children with their parents and to stop separating parents and children in the first place. Recently, Colleen Kraft, who heads the American Academy of Pediatrics, visited a shelter run by the U.S. Office of Refugee Resettlement. She reported that while there were beds, toys, crayons, a playground, and diaper changes, the people working at the shelter had been instructed not to pick up or touch the children to comfort them. Imagine not being able to pick up a child who is not yet out of diapers. So I'd, I'd ask some folks in the media, I tweeted directly at uh, one host um, to think about this op-ed before you talk about anything but this policy. Not the people talking about the policy. Talk about the policy and tell us what you really think of it. Joining us now, we have Democratic Representatives Bill Pascrell and Hakeem Jeffries. Yesterday, they were part of a group of lawmakers who went to a detention facility in New Jersey for an unannounced inspection to speak with asylum, asylum seekers who have been separated from their children. Um, love to hear what you heard from that point of view. I'll start with Hakeem. Well, good morning. Good morning. It was um, you know, heartbreaking, emotional experience when we arrived. It took about an hour and a half before we were able to actually visit uh, with the detainees, notwithstanding the fact that we had prior legal authorization from their attorneys and from these individuals themselves to meet with us. Uh, but when we had the opportunity to finally engage with them, it was seven members of Congress led by Congressman Jerry Nadler, including Billy Pascrell. What was amazing about the experience is that these individuals had had young children, in one, cases, one case a uh, son, um, who were ripped away from them, five years old, seven years old, 12 years old, uh, even though they had come to the border seeking political asylum, asylum. because and they had a credible fear of persecution back home. So why did you, why did you all decide to make this trip? What? Well, we decided to make the trip to see for ourselves. Let's, let's go there, yeah. uh, which we usually do. Uh, we're the first responders. Uh, and uh, we weren't shocked what we heard, but when you're listening to it, when you're hearing the emotion from the fathers on Father's Day, yeah. you know, it, you have to sit back and you have to listen and you have to reach out and try to be of some comfort to the individual. Uh, we feel very strongly about this, and I want to reverse, uh, Micah, the, the, term, uh, the, the, the term that they've used, and that is zero tolerance. We have zero tolerance for this. I want you to know the seven of us who were there. Zero tolerance. We're going to use that term over and over again. We cannot allow this to, to go on. The Academy of Pediatrics, uh, uh, that we talked about before, uh, those folks came out very strongly. Church organizations have come out very strongly. Even part of the evangelical community sees this as a line and, and you know, an envelope pushed too far. We can't accept this as Americans. We can't just talk about it, though. We've sent a letter. I've sent a letter to uh, Rodney Friedlinghausen, who's the chairman of appropriations. You better not allow money from the appropriations to go to any of these because if we continue to fund them they'll continue to grow and that's what i'm very concerned about right now president has to step up to the plate he's got to do his job for change um, thank you for going and bearing witness to this moral outrage this is horrific i can't believe that this is happening in america that we're using children as political pawns for a border wall what can americans do reach out to our Congress, 
congressional representatives, but what can we do to stop this as quickly as possible? It's a great question. The president is going to be on the Hill uh, this week meeting with our colleagues on the Republican side of the aisle. If the American people reach out to all of their representatives in the House and the Senate and express the sheer outrage at the notion of a policy being put into place by our government that's unconscionable, unacceptable, un-American, eventually, hopefully, we'll see my colleagues on the other side of the aisle communicate to the president that this is not acceptable. And the president can end this today with a phone call to his so-called beleaguered attorney general saying, enough, this ends. So I have a quick question. So there are two different things going on, right? And you mentioned this before, that there are uh, people who cross the border illegally at, a, at, a, at an unrecognized border crossing place, carrying a kid. They're right. arrested either as a misdemeanor because it's a first offense or a felony if it's another offense. And then there are people who come to the border at an appropriate border crossing and request asylum because exactly. of fear of persecution or violence, exactly. right? These are two different procedures. So what we are being told, although it seems to be entirely anecdotal, is that there are people who are being caught in the dragnet who are following the law. They come, they request asylum, they have a kid with them, and yet this is still happening. That was your, you were, you were I think you said, told that by at least one person, that they had followed the rules and had yet gotten arrested and had their kid taken from them anyway. That's right. We're no longer, as, as Sessions has said, we're not going to accept asylum uh, for those folks who are under tremendous pressure through gangs or the government itself. And that's why they have left, for fear of their own family, their own, their own security. We're not going to accept those people. We're not even going to listen to them. So now we have a backup of people who want to come to this country uh, for very specific reasons. And we're starting to check off those, some of the reasons that we've uh, accepted people before, at least listen to them. We didn't separate them from their children. That's the one thing we didn't do. There is no justification for that whatsoever. What political end are we looking for here? What's, what's the end game? Well, I'm, I have a couple of ideas on so that. I'm, I'm petrified, though, because this is one center in New Jersey. Yeah. And there are multiple centers in the U.S. that reporters right. haven't been allowed access to. I believe that reporters have only been allowed access to two centers. So those have been cherry picked and are the best case scenario. And yet the pictures and images are still horrifying. Where are the young children? Where are the girls? Well, the three individuals uh, who we met with who were uh, apprehended on the southern border, though, they had voluntarily turned themselves in seeking political asylum, uh, had no idea where their children were, some of whom had been in this detention center for months. And it didn't seem as if any of the individuals who were responsible for their quote-unquote care in that facility had endeavored to try to figure that out. No. There was one individual, a father, who had his uh, daughter torn away from him at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yep who fell down to his knees as he communicated to us, begging for them not to take her away as she was crying. This is somebody who fled one of the most violent nations in the world, in Central America, as the others had, because a gang had showed up earlier in the day uh, looking for his daughter at the school. And he decided at that point that was enough. He was going to take this risky journey in order to save his child. And we know that mothers all across uh, the country who have been apprehended on the southern border have done the same exact thing. Right. So, again, important to keep to the facts. We really appreciate you're all going and getting firsthand accounts. Definitely queue up the Attorney General Jeff Sessions' bite in April, uh, where he announces this policy himself. This policy is brought forward by the Trump administration and announced by the Attorney General. You will hear otherwise from the President at times, blaming it on Democrats. It's not politics, it's a lie. Congressman Bill Pascrell and Hakeem Jeffries, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Our next guest has served in the last three Republican administrations and says the political divisions in this nation will only get worse after Bob Mueller releases his obstruction report. Pete Weiner joins the discussion next.
If you cross the border unlawfully, then we will prosecute you. It's that simple. If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you. And that child may be separated from you as required by law.